And then the more and more people I talk to, I just, there are some, I'm not saying there aren't any good pre and probiotics out there, but like my go-to is just raw goat's milk. I think, you know, the health of the gut. And as Dr. Karen has said so many times, it can take 18 to 24 months to totally, you know, rebalance a gut. As a pet parent, you face more challenges with your dogs and cats today than ever before in history. What's the best food to feed? How do I prevent illness and help them live longer? Maybe you currently have a pet living with disease or behavioral issues and you need a different approach for success. Welcome to the Pet Health Junkies podcast. We're so happy you're here. Pam Roussel is a holistic health practitioner specializing in holistic health for animals. Janet Cesarini is a healthy pet store owner and advocate for health through nutrition. Jessica Fisher is a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. Join us as we share our stories, experiences, and all that we've learned to change the way we think about raising our pets. We're breaking it all down and making it simple by sharing how we help pet parents just like you every day because when we know better we can do better today in 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 this wonderful year of 2022 um, we are both blessed and cursed with an abundance of information at our fingertips we can access anything we want online at any time And for a lot of people, that is very confusing and overwhelming because they just don't know what to trust or they might put their trust in the wrong thing, the wrong person, the wrong site. Um, And for pet parents specifically, when we really kind of niche down just to pet parents, we think about going into the veterinarian's office and having to, to make decisions about what to do with our pets in the veterinarian's office or walking into a pet store and trying to decipher labels, which I know we've talked about, but these things are very, very confusing and can be very, very overwhelming. So, you know, as a pet parent, it can be very overwhelming whether you are in your veterinarian's office trying to make decisions. A lot of us, I know from social media posts, feel very pressured Um, into doing certain things at the veterinarian's office. And really, and we've talked about this before, just walking into a pet store is overwhelming Uh as all get out, not to mention social media. Um, I I was just talking to Gwen the other day, Dr. Judy's daughter, and I said, you know, the best and the worst of humanity is on social media. You know, we have amazing content creators putting out really great content like Dr. Judy. But the opposite side of that is that every Tom, Dick, and Harry can post whatever they want on social media. And there's somebody out there that's going to believe it. And so there is a lot of overwhelm in being a pet parent. So that's what we want to talk to you about today is how to navigate this overwhelm because we can move past it. I know I did a solo episode on on my podcast about the fear, about learning your way past the fear. And I think that's a big part of what we're going to discuss today. So Janet and Pam, let's, let's, let's chat. What are your (laughs) tips? What are your, what's your advice for helping pet parents navigate the overwhelming world of being a pet parent? No, I'm happy to start. I can tell you as a pet parent years ago when I was learning, I, I had to do, I had to listen to a lot of professionals. Like I went to Dr. Karen Becker's site and I started digging into the articles and then I would look up other holistic vets and see what they had to say about a particular subject. Um, I learned muscle testing and I would muscle test what the vet recommended and would narrow down options accordingly based on that. And that was a game changer because then it's not, a, you know, it's not throwing darts, you know, at a dartboard and hoping you get a bullseye. It's like, no, 
it's it's a definite yes or no. <laughs> so that helps me a lot. That being said, I do coach a lot of pet parents, cat parents mostly, when I work with clients and just because the information I give them is overwhelming because it is so much information, stuff that they would never get from their vet because it's an energetic analysis of everything that resonated with imbalance in that cat's body, okay, um, or a stressor in their environment. Everything is it's going to pick up. So when you present that kind of information, I have to prepare them and say, it's going to feel a little overwhelming, but you have to just do one thing at a time. And I've list things, I list recommendations in the order of what's most important that you do right away and then work your way down the list. And then, you know, I think people have to remember that they have to give themselves some, some grace. You know, it's not always financially possible to do everything and implement everything at once. And it certainly um, can be time, cons there can be time constraints. So it can be very hard to, you know, start to do everything all at once. So I just tell people, start, pick one thing, do one thing and feel comfortable doing that one thing. And then start then go through, you know, all the things that you want or you feel that is necessary, um, whether you're a client or, you know, not a client in a store or whatever, is pick one thing and start there. But if you get frozen in fear, you are paralyzed and you, you don't do anything. You're just kind of like in limbo and you are stuck. Um, and that prevents a lot of people from moving and making a decision. So True. pick one thing that you can start with, that you feel comfortable with, make a change, and then give yourself some time to adjust and give your pet some time to adjust to that. And then when you feel like, okay, I can take on another step, take on another step. Um, you just have to come at it with, with some, um, what's the word? You have to be pragmatic, I guess. You have to be yes. logical about it, you know? Yeah, logical. It's very easy, it's very easy to get overwhelmed, but we yeah. don't have to be overwhelmed. That's yeah. what, that's that's on us, you know. That's like too much information overload or whatever. You just have to just come back and, and just ground yourself and be centered and go, okay, I don't have to do all of this, but what can I focus on right now? Yeah, I agree. Um, just even going back to the the my first customer this morning in the store, and we were talking about the. Um, sensitivities that her dog was having each time that um, she goes out to tinkle. And if you think about how many times a dog goes out every day, that's that in itself is overwhelming. And, um, you know, you were saying like one anecdote very simply is to get a warm towel or washcloth and wipe down the underbelly. And that's easy to easy enough to do, you know, if you don't have other stressors and pressures, you know, trying that you're trying to get out the door or like me, you don't have five dogs that you have to wipe down. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, in her case, we were talking about the simple things that you can do, which one would be to wipe down. We were changing the protein on the recommendation of her veterinarian. And so we were picking a cooling protein um, like pork is what we did. But, um, you know, she's overwhelmed with the fact that her pet is in distress and this has been going on for two years Two. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a long time. And so, you know, I like to, and my girls, I train them to be as logical as possible. And as you said, pragmatic Pam. So, you know, we take a step back and we talk about, you know, as quickly as possible, what's been done and, more times than not, we haven't incorporated a pre and probiotic into the regimen, which is a daily thing and a per meal um, thing. So, you know, we're overwhelmed because what we're doing isn't working. And there's, what's the definition of insanity? <laughs> doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. Exactly. But it's easy to do when you are, you know, the problem is staring you right in the face and you're this close to it. And so fortunately, we have so many resources available to us so to hopefully say, hey, let's take a step back. And have we addressed the root cause or potentially the root cause? And in this case, we know that 
um, up to 80% of the immune system lies in the gut biome. And that right there is humans and pets first defense against any type of disease, whether it be something as simple as a sensitivity or something like hypothyroidism or, you know, worse diseases. And so um, when we talk about this, you know, 360 view, this gamut of all the things that can potentially benefit the pet, we have to break that down and say, let's first back up and let's start with the pre and probiotic. And we talk about slow and steady wins the race, be consistent. Um, you know, if we want a different result, we have to do something different. And this, you know, this product, you know, right here um, has this label for this reason, you know, there's testing behind it. So pragmatics, logic, taking a deep breath <laughs> um, and, you know, those first two things in this situation are, or excuse me, these three things, which are, let's start addressing the health of the gut. Let's get them on a different food. And in this case, we brought in food energetics, which that in itself gets overwhelming to pet parents because they're, they're most of the time not aware that there are proteins that are cooling, warming, or neutral. And what the heck does that mean? Um, and so we can very easily overwhelm um, pet parents. And so we then, we present it and then we back it up and say, let's start here. Let's address the gut. This is a great food to you know transition to. And then, hey, by the way, since it seems to be a contact allergy, you know, have you considered wiping down your pet? And if not, then, you know, just keep a, get a wet rag, a wet paper towel, something, keep it simple as possible. Um, yeah. And then forget everything else for now. <laughs> and and that, that's important to remember too, because like you said, people can get so myopic yeah. and focus on one little thing when they really need to take a 70,000 you know, foot <laughs> view of the situation. Yeah. Look at the big picture, step back. And as hard as it is for pet parents to be objective, you've got to take yourself out of the situation yeah. and be objective and look at it as if you're an outsider going, observing. I think observation gets missed so much because yes. we're focused in on one little symptom and it might be a big symptom, but we get so overwhelmed and focused on one thing when you got to step back and you got to look at the big picture because you know, a lot of times they get overwhelmed because like you said, what they're doing isn't working Yeah, and they don't know where else to go, but they're so stuck being so myopic. Yeah. Right? Yes. That they can't get back and go, well, well, let me think about when it started, you know, what's yeah. going on, you know, whatever the situation might be, think, and that's what we call a holistic approach. Take a 70,000 square foot view. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, take a look at the whole picture. Look at the whole pet. You know, if you're going into a pet store and you're trying to figure out the best food to feed, you know, you might want to do a little research on brands. If you're trying to do better, you can seek out really good, knowledgeable people, like you said, online, and then don't take their word for it. Go, go research it, you know, yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I think people, when they start to take ownership of that type of information, they don't just, they don't just take people's word for it. Go do your own research mm -hmm. see what you find. And if, if that resonates with what you're learning and that this other, you know, person that you're learning from is saying, if that really resonates and really something is like, oh, you know what? I, I feel that that's true. You have to pay attention to that. You know? And if you get conflicting information and your gut's like, you know, I still don't know. I think too often we disregard our own intuition and that gut sense like something's off. I don't know something about this. I just don't, I don't like that. I don't know what it is, but we ignore signs. We ignore those things. 
Um, so just being, like you said, being objective, do some research because that's when you really get into the nitty gritty and you can learn something and you have to take it into your heart and see what really resonates because like you said, Jessica, there's a lot of information out there. It can be conflicting, you know, you can find both sides to support in a study, depending on what your end goal is to study is, you know, um, you have to really just trust that intuition, that God given intuition that we all have. We just have not paid attention to it and not trusted it for so long because we've given away the ability to make decisions for ourselves to institutions, organizations, companies, whatever it is forever. Yeah. Instead of taking it on upon ourselves to do that. Yeah. And I think we have an obligation as a pet parent yeah. to do that. I mean, there are, there are kids, you know, yeah. who live long and healthy lives and you just can't take a commercial's word for it on TV. Yeah. You got to make sure they back up what they say, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. I know when I um, was faced with health, challenges as my dog started to become what we consider senior dogs and all this new information started coming at me when I walked into um, an independently owned pet store and I think I mentioned this on your radio show Pam I thought that when she suggested raw food to me because my dog was showing signs of external and what I called allergies. My dog has allergies, you know, he's licking and he's itching and his eyes are watering. And, you know, the woman who owned the independent pet store that I went into, she said she was one of the first people that corrected me on allergies versus sensitivities. And that was the first time that I'd heard that because even my veterinarian would use the term allergies. And then the, the, Go to was Apoquel. And I said this when we started our podcast, as far as my origin story goes, I I just said, oh, okay. But something inside me said, let me go research that. And I'm so grateful. And this goes back to what you just said, Pam, which is to trust your gut, trust your intuition. And if if something you're questioning it and you don't doesn't feel quite right, pause. Yeah. Just pause. You don't have to act now. I mean, it's not a life and death situation. I mean, yes, I wanted Hank to have some relief, but more so I did not want him to be, you know, having a life where he has to take a prescription medicine because I knew at that point in my life what prescription medicines when taken forever can do. They can wreck a body. And, um, just like we learn in, you know, the talking about herbs, you know, how like will treat like, and I think it was Dr. Judy, um, who was talking and, or it might've been Dr. Besant or it was either Dr. Morgan or Dr. Besant. And I'm sure they both have covered this, but, um, and even Rita Hogan, um, they have said that, you know, too much of a good thing, can end up being harmful, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's the same with pharmaceuticals. So in the natural world of herbs, in this case, if that can be the case, then it only makes sense in pharmaceuticals that it would be the same. And so, and I have seen just through family and, and family members' pets, what prescriptions have done. And it's, it's never been a positive ending. Mm -hmm. That's sad that, reality. Yeah. And let me speak to something you said, because it yeah. reminded me of people who go to the vet and get overwhelmed yeah. with things that they're throwing at them and scaring the bejesus out of them with diagnoses, you know, and mm -hmm. then they put, the, they put such a fear into a pet parent that they, they are basically paralyzed. Yeah. And their mind shuts down. You know, and they can't rationally think you, your ability to think logically goes out the window when you are having a fear response. Correct. Determined. So 
rather than let yourself become overwhelmed and pushed into a decision that in your gut doesn't feel right, you have the, the option and you should probably listen to yourself, this, this little, you know, whisper in your head that says, I don't know about that. That doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound good to me. I'm not comfortable with that. You can always postpone that decision. Correct. That clinic, And you say, you can say your vet, you know what? I appreciate the input and your suggestions. I'm going to go home and I'm going to do some research and then I'll let you know what I decide to do. Absolutely. You, know, you have to make a decision right then and there. Yeah. You know, because at the end of the day, like you said, you need to feel comfortable with the decision and the long-term effects of those decisions because people don't, people don't think five years out. They think right here, right now. And they yeah. don't realize the repercussions uh, and the damage that certain medications and procedures or whatever can, can result in over time. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, we're trying to, as a culture to get a pill for every ill and a quick fix. That's what yeah. we want. Just give yeah. me the pill, fix it, so go home and fix the problem. But basically you're just buying a band aid. So yeah. that's why I just, I, I think it's important that people know that you do not have to make decisions on the spot. Yeah. If you're overwhelmed in your vet clinic, if you're overwhelmed in a pet store or, or what, whatever situation you might need, if you need to just remove yourself from that situation then do it, you know, yeah. go home, have a clear mind, do some research, talk to other people, get second opinions mm -hmm. before you make your decision. Cause that way, at least you're going to, you're going to collect enough information to make an informed decision and you don't yeah. have to feel pressured and it's okay to say no. I agree. Yeah. Just the pause was a P-A-U-S-E. <laughs> pause for the pause P-A-W-S. That was, um, I'm so grateful that in that moment I went with my intuition in that little, like you said, that little voice. And I said, I took the information, thanked my vet for the information, you know, paid the bill, went, there was a, an independent pet store across the street. And I went in and said, here's the issue that I'm having. Here's what's been recommended to me. Do you have any more information on that? And, um, I, again, my eyes were opened just first time I heard about raw food was in her pet store. And I thought she had three eyes and horns <laughs> because I mean, I was a kibble feeder and, um, that was your paradigm. That was my paradigm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just am grateful that I paused and I started to do what you said at the top of the show, Jessica, which was to, there's information out there. There's a lot of information out there. Not all of it's going to resonate with you, but go and, and do look at the information, be a seeker. Mm -hmm. And because when you seek, you will find and be patient. That's another thing, you know, pause, research, make a decision and be patient because um, when we are, changing things up and doing things a little differently. You know, it is not like you said, Pam, about take a pill and it fixes it. Boom. I have a headache. I take a pill and it's gone or yeah, that that's just the tip of the iceberg, but being patient um, and know and trust where you're getting your information. So um, I find that a lot of our clientele that come through the door um, have done some research and we love it when we have an informed pet parent. Um, but we also have the opposite and that's what it really makes me sad when we have somebody that comes in in a panic and they're, you know, like dilated cardiomyopathy, DCM and the no grain versus some grain. Um, and then which type of grain, I mean, that in itself is, we very rarely have enough time in here to, <laughs> to dive into that. But, um, you know, there's completely two, um, two thought, you know, That's patterns on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two mm -hmm. different perspectives. Yes or, or no. 
And um, that can be quite overwhelming, dependent upon whose school of thought you, you know, you adhere to. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like if you came into my store and, you know, you just, you had made up your d mind, um, whether it's just where you are, it's convenience, it's budget, whatever it may be, you're going to feed kibble. Well, even in that, that can be overwhelming. You know, we have a very curated room where we have our dry food options and it's never an easy answer when somebody says, well, which one do you recommend? Well, I recommend everyone in this room. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in my store. And so we have to then break it down um, and talk about why each one is in the store, which what are the you know unique characteristics? What's the same about them? And we do that we kind of guide our pet parents in that decision-making process so that they can avoid being as overwhelmed as it potentially could be by asking questions. So, you know, today's question, you know, it would have been, do we have any sensitivities? What is the age of the pet? Um, what's the breed of the pet? Um, are they on things such as, you know, the, the neurotoxins, the chemicals for flea tick and heartworm? Are they on supplements? Are they taking medications? I mean, there's a lot that goes into answering what appears to be a simple question. Right. And you know, that's a huge responsibility for us um, being in this industry, you know, because we carry a huge responsibility for all of our, you know, clientele's um, decisions. We know that we are influencing them. And so we don't take that lightly. And the pet parents, don't either. So, you know, there's a lot to be considered in that little 10 pound fluffy <laughs> or the 75 pound Hank. Um, but we try to break it down, find out what the issues are, what is important for addressing the issues, what's important to the pet parent. And by looking at those, you know, or finding those answers, we can help narrow it down. You know, kind of like a funnel. No, exactly. Yeah. And then encourage ourselves and encourage them um, to every day, just it's like taking one step and then the next step every day, work the program. If it's pre and probiotic that we're starting out and we're not changing the food, then here's what you can expect. And here's the timing on that. But even with starting a pre and probiotic, um, the most consistent information that I have received from pet industry um, professionals is 90 days minimum. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we get people that bring it back and just say it, it didn't work. And that's a sad day. They, um, they give up too quick because yeah. I think we're accustomed to fast fixes. No doubt. Zero to For 60 sure. in four seconds. Right. <laughs> it's true. And I tell yeah. clients all the time, it's, you know, you have a pet in your life for a reason, and this is a journey, and they are going to teach you a lot. Yes. If they're, if you are willing to listen. Yes. If you're willing to learn. Yes. You know, not everybody is at a place where they're ready to learn, and that's okay. <laughs> it's just a matter of planting seeds. But, you know, when you can step back and kind of look at it from that perspective, if your dog or your cat is presenting some kind of a health challenge or a condition or something, look at it as an opportunity to learn. Yeah. And you, are, you know, they're trying to teach you something. And sometimes it can be teaching us about ourselves and how we are, you know, and how we think and all of that, um, as well as learning about them and what is best for them and their physical needs, their biological needs and you know, metabolic, all of those things. So um, it goes beyond just having a dog or a cat. It's, it's a huge responsibility. I mean, we take care of ourselves as humans and we, have, we do all of these things. We have, you know, our checklist to make sure. Maybe. We care. Yeah, some of us. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It yeah. should be the same. If, if we could give that same set of importance and priority to our pets, there's so much we can learn and um, they're here to teach us. Absolutely. 
Yeah, I agree with that wholeheartedly. That's how I learned about flea tick and heartworm was from Charlie, Hank's mm -hmm. brother, his litter mate. He, he literally refused to take the, um, I think it was trifexis at the time, and he refused. He stopped taking it, even though it was beef flavored. <laughs> that's an issue. <laughs> there's a reason yeah. there's salt, sugar, and flavoring in that because it's not good. Um, but yeah, he was the one. And, and my dogs have taught me so much about life and about myself. And um, he was the one that made me start to go, hmm. <laughs> You know, I've been smelling pesticides when I pop that little thing out of the foil container and I had even verbalized it. And you guys know that if you verbalize it, you've probably been thinking about it for a long time and it finally has to come out. And that I, I had verbalized it to my husband and said, you know, this just makes me uncomfortable. I don't like the fact that it smells like the chemicals at that time we did chemicals on the lawn. We didn't know any different. And so um, now we do natural. But um, I had verbalized it and then Charlie refused it. And I finally did what Dr. Morgan has said. She said, you know, there's that little pamphlet inside the box and there's the labels on the boxes for a reason. Read them. And I finally stopped and did that. And I had no idea what all those long scientific words were. I can't even pronounce them. Um, who can? <laughs> and so, um, I they looked. Don't want you to read them. They're hoping you won't read them because you can't pronounce them. And you know, probably, <laughs> probably so. <laughs> and so I looked a few of them up. And again, just like when I looked up Apoquel, mortified. And yeah. I went to the kitchen and I. I was really upset that I was throwing hundreds of dollars in the trash can. But um, I, I threw all of that in the trash can and that was, that was, you know, $150. I had five dogs. That's, yeah. that's not cheap. And so at that point I, I just didn't care. It wasn't worth, it wasn't worth it to me because I've heard this in our store. We've heard this where, well, I'm going to finish up. Yeah that product because I spent $200 or I spent a hundred dollars or I spent $50, whatever. And number one, they'll take it back. Most places will take it back. Number two, how much is your pet's well-being worth? So, you know, we were not in any means, you know, able to throw away, you know, open the window and throw money away, but I did because it, it was at the expense of my pets. And that was, God, that was a day that I exhaled. It was like, and, um, cause I didn't have to worry that I was putting poison into my pet's bloodstream. When, you know, from there I went to learn about how, how it works and um, it doesn't keep fleas, ticks and mosquitoes off of my pet. They actually have to bite my pet to get the little tiny bit of toxin that's in the bloodstream going throughout my pets. They have to bite it, bite my dog, and they become sick and die from what they took off. I mean, they're parasites. Yes. And your pet's the host. And just because you're giving chemicals doesn't mean it keeps them away. So that was another one where I was just like, you know, and I think... um Thank T H A N K. Um, people like Dr. Karen Becker, like Rodney Habib, like Dr. Morgan, Dr. Besant, um, Dr. Tobias, all of these guys, um, uh, just about sharing what they know. And thank God that they had the um, desire and the courage to ask questions. And to go learn a different way, you know, they didn't, they, they reached a fork in the road and they did, they went to the path that was less beaten. Yeah. Yes. So that's what we're encouraging our listeners to do, our pet parents to do here. Not, I mean, here and, and you guys as professionals and um, us as professionals and just all of you listening is that we're encouraging you to stop and pause and, ask questions and do some research and then go ask some more questions. Um, and don't feel like you have to 
like you're being backed in a corner and there's only one way. Yeah. There's, there's a right yeah. way for each of us. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it really does come down to knowledge gives you confidence. And I say this as a person who is still, and I always will, like we, we should live our lives as students. Um, yes. So I know for sure <laughs> I have way more to learn. And even recently I was faced with something with one of my cats and fear sent me down a path that logically I knew better, mm. but, um, I, I was fearful. And so knowledge equals confidence. And I think it's also really important to be proactive in learning because when you, as Pam said, when you are faced with a situation, especially if you have a medical professional standing in front of you, making you fear that if you don't take their advice right then and there, something horrible is going to happen or something worse okay. is going to happen. Um, that's not the time you're not going to be able to think logically in that moment. So being, being proactive with, um, starting to learn any and everything you can. And it's, it's to me, I think a good idea. Also what you said, Pam, about doing one thing at a time, mm -hmm. um, that is, Sci like that's science. We, you change one variable at a time yes. to see what outcomes, you know, what outcome you get from that change. When you change too many things at one time, then you have no idea what worked and what didn't work and how those things interacted with one another. So yep. doing one thing at a time, just from a scientific point of view is absolutely the best. So like if you feel overwhelmed because you feel like you should be doing 10 things differently, understand that it is in your pet's best interest and your best, best interest to just go ahead and do one thing. Even if you feel like you could do three or four of them, do one be, and keep a journal. I yes. used to do this and I forgot. I don't know what it was. I think just life got in the way. <laughs> and when I talked to Angela Ardolino the other day, I was like, so we should keep a journal. And she was like, absolutely. 100%. Every little thing you do, yep. keep a journal. Yes. Because you're not going to remember what happened two Tuesdays ago. <laughs> no. <laughs> Much less. Four months. Yeah. <laughs> Life is overwhelming. Yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah. it rained that day. And as you were saying with the environmental sensitivities, maybe it rained that day. And that's why the sensitivity wasn't that bad because all the pollen got knocked down. You know what I mean? Like, so when you're going back, if you keep a journal, that can really, really help you too. Yeah. Um, and creating a team for your pet is True. also, I think, going to help give you confidence that in the moment when you're talking to one person on that team you've curated for your pet, it's not just, oh, I need to go back and think about this because then you're, whoever you're talking to can say, well, you're not doing the right thing for your pet. If you can go back and say, look, I have a team that I consult with um, my, maybe it's that your primary veterinarian is a holistic veterinarian that you do telehealth with. Then you can tell your allopathic veterinarian that you're getting blood work and x-rays done at that. Thank you so much. I'm going to take this back to my primary veterinarian and we'll make a, yeah. we will make a decision. Yes. And so that also can give people a lot of confidence just to stand up for themselves and their pets and say, instead of saying I, saying we, it, it really empowers you to be able to do that. People like Janet, who are in these independent pet stores, I've thought of so many things as the two of you were talking, and I just didn't want to interrupt. You didn't journal. <laughs> I did. well, no, I, I did. I was. Oh, you did? <laughs> I didn't um, even notice. I'm impressed. <laughs> um, it can be incredibly overwhelming as a pet parent just the difference in walking into a regular pet store and an independent pet store, because you're not going to find, like if you walk into a regular pet store and that's where you normally shop. And then one day you're like, I'm going to treat myself and walk into this boutique. Right. And you walk in and you recognize nothing, nothing, 
<laughs> and you're like, what is this? How overwhelming is that, right? So having, having people like you, Janet, on your team for yeah. your pet is so important. And knowing that when you do walk into an independent uh, pet store, really any independent small business, those people are happy to have you come up and ask them questions. Like don't yes. feel as though you're a burden by asking a question or that you have a stupid question, right? Yeah. That's not No stupid not questions. Possible. No, <laughs> no. Um, Yep. Yeah. Uh, and, and of course, again, with the trying one thing at a time, it made me think back to um, training your dog. You may be that person that wants to train your dog in agility or dock diving or whatever it is, but you get caught up in the beginning where you can't even get your dog to sit. Like, understand that it's one True. thing at a time. You're not going to hire a dog trainer and learn how to do agility in one session. You're, yep. you're also not going to learn everything you need to know by having one conversation with somebody. <laughs> um, it's a journey. And, and that's, I think the beauty of it is, is the journey. Um, but I also wanted to kind of interject that doing Things outside of learning can be very important in this process as well to combat overwhelm. So self-care, doing some self-work, something as simple as doing a meditation, or I absolutely love, um, even if you think it's too woo-woo to do a chakra balancing, I love to go on YouTube and just type in chakra balance and do like a 10 minute meditation and sit down with your pets and do that and clear your head. Um, a lot of that, that can help you gain focus. And even in the practice of meditation, a, a billion thoughts are going to run through your mind and you can find clarity in what is weighing on your heart just by doing something as simple as that. So it can help a lot just to practice self-care and, and to, to do some work on yes. yourself, you'll find that you can help your pet better that way too. And kind of in that same regard, clean your social media feeds, remove the negativity, add in some positivity. Like I recently went through and because 10 years ago I wasn't a creator. So I followed hundreds of pages that were pets. I just removed them all from my feed because it was, junking up my feed and add in some positivity, add in those creators that you know and love like Dr. Karen Becker, like Dr. Judy Morgan, like Pam and Janet and myself. <laughs> Shameless plug. And, um, but there really are so many really great find people that you resonate with and fill your social media feeds with that because that can be a really great starting off point to say, oh, that's a topic I want to learn more about. And then you can go do a deep dive on that. Um, but removing the negativity from your social media feed, I think, is something that can really, really help clear our minds and help us make better decisions as well. Yeah, it will help with the overwhelm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you said like brought back a memory years ago. I want to. I don't even remember '90s sometime. I walked into a Whole Foods because I needed some something that was a medicine. Okay. And I had never been in Whole Foods before. <laughs> I remember walking into this Whole Foods, and like you said, I recognized zero. Green. Same. <laughs> zero. And I remember to this day what I said to myself, oh my God, why would anybody shop here? <laughs> I don't recognize any of these brands. Yep. And I think it was just like a foreshadowing because now... <laughs> Yeah. I avoid the natural, the, the regular grocery stores and I, I gravitate to those stores because yeah. I understand, you know, but it's a paradigm shift in the beginning. You, you feel like you're a duck out of water going, I don't know anything. I don't know. I don't recognize any of these brands. It's yeah. Not the one that I see in my grocery store or in my big box pet store or whatever. So True. I don't know. And there's this fear of the unknown. Yeah. You know, but it planted a seed. Yes. And now I'm like, I want to go hang out in the, in the herb aisle of, you know, 
sprouts <laughs> or, or whole foods or natural groceries or whatever it is and around the homeopathy and around the supplements and i i'm energized in those aisles now and i know what i don't know what everything is for but it, it's like comfortable but yeah. years ago i was like this is foreign why would i yeah. show you <laughs> that's my ignorance you know well, it's yep. so true. I walked into Target the other day. Um, I I was looking for clothes, honestly, and I had gotten to the point where I'm like, I'm not finding anything. And I walked into Target and um, I walked, I said, you know what? I'm going to take this opportunity to record some quick reels. And I went to the pet aisles and I got there and I was like, so uncomfortable. I was like, what in the world? I like, it, it, it was just a shock to me. And uh, then I, I posted one reel. Well, I, I created a reel from a bunch of pictures I took and somebody commented on it and said, you literally just listed everything that's available to people. And you're saying it's all bad. And I, it took me aback a little bit. Cause I'm like, this is absolutely not everything that's available to you, but so many people don't know that. So right. many people think that's what you have to choose from. Yeah. What's in Walmart or Target or yes. wherever. Yeah. That's a good point. And that's I what was, you were saying earlier about paradigm shift. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because what I was saying, how we used to be just straight up kibble feeders, because that's what we were exposed to. It was the only thing that I knew, you know, via my veterinarian and, um, you know, it wasn't until I walked into that independent pet store and I did not know there were other brands and I didn't recognize the brands in her store. I just like in Whole Foods. And so um, I couldn't get to my studio today. So I'm in, in my store. But um, the paradigm shift um, is so important. And you, know, I used to be somebody who went grocery shopping. I go down the pet aisle and I've got I will tell on myself now you know, you guys know if I go down that aisle, which I, I have some guilt when I start to go down that aisle now, knowing what I know and I, it makes me uncomfortable. But if I do, it's kind of like, I want to just see what's new, what's new on the aisle in, you know, in the big box store or in the, the grocery store. And I do that turning around like of the ingredients um, so that I hopefully can encourage people subliminally to read the ingredient panel first, rather than looking at the brand name or the pretty picture on the bag, which has does a hundred percent does not have to connect with what's inside the bag. I could put mother earth on the front of my dog food bag, and then I could put garbage in it and that's okay according to the, you know, mm -hmm. regulatory Agency. institution that oversees pet food so and, and human food. So anywho, um, but going down that aisle, it's a lot and I almost feel guilty, but I remember that what your reader posted, Jessica, I remember that being in that same position, it's like, okay, what? And if you've ever gone on a diet and your nutritionist tells you that you can't have, here's the list of foods you can have. All you see is, oh my God, I can't have anything. And you cry because <laughs> you're like, well, what am I going to eat? Air? Same thing in the pet world. It's like, okay, if you're telling me that all of this is probably not in my pet's best interest, then what? And so I like the suggestion about, you know, walk into your independent pet store, go online and just search holistic pet food brands or raw food or freeze dried raw food, gently cooked raw food, um, even dry pet food with animal protein. Because if you're going to feed a kibble, let's look for one that has animal protein. And I don't mean byproducts. And then you can do what we said earlier in this show, and which is to reach out to the, the pet food manufacturers, to reach out to the brands and do some research. Email them and ask them about their sourcing and see what they tell you. 
and who manufactures it? You know, do they manufacture it or does somebody else do it for them where there's very little oversight? And can I say something else to that? It just popped into my head. I'm supposed to share this. Have an open mind. Yes. Have an open mind because if you are not willing in your mind to be open to change, yeah. then you will resist everything that comes into your path that could yeah. be potentially beneficial for your pet, but you're too you have walls up in your your resistance. So I say yeah. Come with, be open-minded to the information that you're going to learn because you don't know what you don't know. And that's one of my favorite expressions. I say it all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I don't know. And Correct. until you get out there and you start learning, it can be mind-blowing and it can be exciting. In your, it, it can open your world in ways you have no idea. And that yeah. can transition your pet from sickly and unhealthy to vibrant and healthy. And, but you have to be open-minded and you have to be willing to step out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. and hear things that are unfamiliar to you. Yeah. You know, and then you take them inside and you and see what really resonates and do your research. Yeah, it's true. I mean, go back to when, you know, you're, you're born and you scoot and then you crawl and then you stand up and you're unstable and then you stand and you walk and you run. And then there's this thing with wheels on it and they tell you to get on it <laughs> and you're like, um, but I might fall down, you know, mm -hmm. but then you try it and Hey, it's a bicycle and you're off and zooming, you know, and, yep. it's, and then it goes on from there. So back to, I love what you said about be open-minded that that never hurt anyone. Well, Although, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> be open-minded and smart. But um, and then going back to overwhelm, coming back to that one thing at a time. So when I tr began my journey, um, from big box brand kibble to a more independent brand kibble, and then I started to learn that I need to improve the nutrition that my pets are getting because we're having these issues. So something is wrong. And what I'm doing is I'm putting, I'm putting this food in their bowls, which is complete and balanced, but apparently something that I'm giving them isn't right because we're having some issues. And so I changed one thing and, you know, and maybe it's adding a really high quality whole food canned food and you know canned that could be that's a whole other discussion but maybe it's adding freeze-dried raw or maybe it's adding fresh maybe it's adding goat milk but go and seek the information if you know be open seek the information from an independent pet store or look online all these wonderful brands if you if you go and google goat milk you're going to see brands like bones and co um green juju open farm primal and well used to be steve's since what else were you going to say no, I'm thinking no, ben broth, not, not yeah milk. but and so just googling those and then start learning about goat milk i mean that'd be a great place to start if you want to improve absolutely yeah, I, the, I don't know a dog or a cat that couldn't benefit, benefit. From, from goat's milk yeah yeah, I, I don't. But so, yeah, I, I think that is a good place to start. And I think this is a good place to end, hi, too, hi. with have an open mind and just do one thing at a time. Be willing to learn. <laughs> yes, be willing to learn. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And remember, it's a journey. It's not a race. It, it's a you know, it's a it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. So take your time. You know. Take your yeah. time. Yes. And there, there is, there is no destination. You're always going to continue to learn. Right. True. Yeah. Always. And it's exciting. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a great place to wrap up. Awesome. Yeah. Well, if you're not following the podcast already, please make sure to hit that follow button and go ahead and review us, rate us, give us hopefully five stars. If for some reason you don't think the podcast deserves five stars, then go to pethealthjunkies.com 
and con- fill out the contact form and let us know oh. why so we can talk to you about it and we can Improve. change whatever we need to to make sure we are uh, because we are here for you to help you learn and grow and help help your pets better so um anything else no nope. thanks for joining us yeah yeah, uh, yeah. And, until next time bye guys have a blessed day bye bye